You're listening to Outlaws and Gunslingers, the only podcast covering all of America's infamous criminals, from the Wild West to the Mafia, all the way up to the ruthless street gangs of today. Brought to you exclusively by the Creative Control Network. Here are your hosts, the Mouthy Michiganders, Bang and Dang. Welcome back to Outlaws and Gunslingers, everybody. Yeah, we're still trekking through the old Wild West portion of uh, episodes that we previously did on uh, the Mouth of Michiganders feed, but we're up the standards. Re-recording these ones may may not be up to standards. So, yeah, either. well, well, back then we were recording with uh, right, a, a phone. phone and then um, one mic between the two of us for yeah. a majority of those episodes. So with the wood pellet stove in our ears. And now that we're here on the old Creative Control Network, decided, hey, these are uh, good content, good, uh, good, good stories of all the old West figures in towns and gangs and all that good stuff. Might as well re-record and put them out, and uh, right. eventually we'll get to the prohibition yeah. stuff. But for now. We got about, yeah, about 10 more episodes of, um, no, about 14 more episodes of Outlaws and Gunslingers Wild West Edition. I don't know what to tell you. Before we move to uh, Prohibition and all that good stuff. Uh, but, we got uh, some damn good episodes coming on up, especially with a damn good one right meow. Damn good one right now, and yeah, the 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 story that everybody's waiting for is, is a big four-parter coming up as mm, well. Uh, the saga. We might end... Uh, a saga. We might end the Wild West run with that mm-hmm. um, oh. four-parter. Didn't we end the show with that? No, we ended the show with gambling and in the gambling in the Wild West era. That was our last Wild West show on our feed. But uh, because uh, that's a major factor to what's gonna lead us to our next era. Who wide herb? You no know, gambling. I mean, I guess yeah, you could. Uh, we could rework it and work it into the, the debut episode of uh, Prohibition. Prohibition, even though we already have one about George Remus out there. Well, the debut <laughs> on one this needs feed, to be uh, so. needs to be um, uh, dude from uh, Boardwalk. Nucky, 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 Nucky. Actually, I looked up his story. It's not that impressive. That's not. But yeah, <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> this one today. If you guys don't know who this is, then I don't know why you're listening to this podcast, or maybe. You don't know who this is, and that's why you're listening to the podcast, either or. Right. This one's Jesse James. Not Brad Pitt. That's all you can come up with, who played Jesse James. Did he? Not did, the... did Brad Pitt play Jesse James? I, I think or he did. Or that was Ben Affleck. No, he played in The the Coward Who Shot Jesse James. What's his name? Um, Bob Ford or something. Brad Pitt did? Yeah. He was in that movie. I don't know if he was Jesse James. I never saw it. Didn't watch it. And no, it's not the Jesse James that builds motorcycles. Oh, that Jesse James. That Jesse James. Who was, was, who was, was he married to? Was married to Sandra Bullock. They adopted a little Nigerian baby, and then um, he cheated on her with that. His biker baby. That, no, that Kat Von D. She's a tattoo chick. You used to have a show oh, on um, Spike TV or some shit like that. Tattoo chick, biker babe. Yeah. What, yeah, what are you going to Hand in hand, right? Right. Jesse James, one of the most famous outlaws in the history of the Wild West. Obviously, he was known as the modern-day Robin Hood because he was known for robbing the rich and giving back to the poor. Jesse's parents, Robert James and Elizabeth James, married on December 28th. Night- <laughs> Robbing the rich and giving back to the hood. <laughs> That's a nice little pun. I'm almost positive you're not the first one to ever say that. What? <laughs> Robert the rich giving back to the hood. Well, his mom and daddy <laughs> were born on December 28th, 1841. And soon after Robert graduated from Georgetown College, they relocated relocated. <laughs> Relocated to Centerville, Clay County, Missouri. Centerville. Which is now known as Kearney, Missouri. Kearney, Missouri. Centerville in Clay County, huh? So he was born. Doesn't even say where he was born. So where was he born? Yeah, where's that? Uh, well, he, they were located. <laughs> well, ain't that crazy? Robert came to the pastor of a church and then founded William Jewell College in Liberty, Missouri. Elizabeth, known as G. Z, I'm sorry, G. As Z. There's clearly a Z there. <laughs> gave birth to Frank James on the 10th of January, oh, 1843. James. Followed by Robert James on the 19th of July in 1845, who died 33 days later. Mm. Jesse was born on September 5th, 1847. Okay, so Jesse James was born in Centerville, Clay County, Missouri. 
No. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, Jesse was born on the 5th of September in 1847, followed by a sister named Susan on the 25th of November in 1849. So every two years, they are like, pa, 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 pa. That's pretty much how you do it, man. Right. 1850. Good, the, good the old lady, time to heal, and then once she's, you sure you can handle? You sure you can handle another nine months of this? No, no painkillers uh, for birth, and you could die each time. Like, let's do it. Let's do it. We need some more farm hands, Bill. We need some more par- farm hands, Pop. Well, you won't pull out. <laughs> <laughs> he's, no. like, he's like, what is that? That wasn't, that wasn't invented then. You're supposed to pull your prick out. Nobody pulled out in the fucking old days. Right. Ever. Ever. In 1850, a wagon train of local men were headed to California to search for gold and asked Robert James to serve as the chaplain on their trip. Well, when he arrived in California on August 1st, 1850, he soon got a fever after oh, drinking no. contaminated water. That's terrible. He died on August 18th, 1850 from cholera in Placerville, California and was buried in an unmarked grave. And that, oh, unmarked? They couldn't mark his grave? Why would they? Well, Jesse's mom would remarry twice, first in 1852 to Benjamin Sims. This marriage ended because he was an asshole to her kids, basically, right. and then she married Dr. Archie Reuben Samuel in 1855. I can imagine this guy's polite and makes tons of money, right? Sure. Right. He's a doctor. Well, Jesse and his brother Frank both worked... <laughs> Please let that be the last time you do that. <laughs> Jesse and his brother Frank both worked on the farm while growing up, and their stepdaddy taught them how to ride a horse, uh, shooting skills, how to shoot... You know, they sat there and shot the little cans up the... Up the uh, Little bean cans. Off the fence and stuff as a child. I bet they young, learned young, like five. You think that, that was about right? Well, considering they were already older than five when uh, their stepdad taught them how to shoot, you'd be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying not them. Like most. Right. I get it. Jesse was described as a generous, noble-hearted boy with prankish charm. He's a little rascal, but he's a good boy. <laughs> That's what all the women said in town. Oh, that Jesse. Don't mind that Jesse. <laughs> that boy's all fine. Did they say piss and vinegar back then? I have no I don't know. I didn't no, live back oh, then. Piss and vinegar. I didn't live back then to, to know what they say. Maybe he's got that ADHD, Susan. <laughs> what ADHD? The what the hell is that? What the hell? You know they make pills for that now. <laughs> <laughs> pills? <laughs> Hell's pills. You just got to call your doctor. What do I call him? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't doctor. have. I don't think they had pills back then. They definitely didn't have pills. That's why people were drinking uh, all the little shit people were getting fucking uh, addicted to. What's and a chick from uh, on... Dependent? What was the? Uh, I forget what it's called. What's the drug called? The chick from um, Deadwood gets hooked on it for a minute. Yeah. Wyatt Earp's wife uh, in Tombstone gets hooked on it. Well. What the hell is that? Either or, it's a medicine. Right, anyway. Well, Jesse, well, just... <laughs> Jesse turned 18 in 1861. The country was about to break out in war. Oh, shit. The state of Missouri. 18. That's a yeah. prime-ass time to be turning 18 in 1861, right. huh? Never, even if he was 15, it still would have been fine. Well, he could have been a drummer. Most likely would have fought, though. Yeah, I don't know about that. The state of Missouri at the time was split on who decided with in a war. They're like, we don't know, guys. We don't know. What do we do? Um, Yeah. They're pretty much in the middle of the country where they lie, so right at the line where the south and north would be. So yeah, Oklahoma, fucking Colorado, Oklahoma to the left, yeah, but not Wyoming. Yeah, Wyoming's right fucking there. Eh. Right here. Yeah, so pretty much in the, just like it says, intertwined with both south and north at the time. Ah, the state of Missouri at the time was split on who to decide with in the war. Most of the people that lived there had southern roots, but their economy was with the north. Like, man, I sure do like the way of the Southern living, but the the Northern working is the way to go. We're going to make so much money. <sighs> We're going to work in buildings and not fields. <laughs> right? That's what they want. Industrial. Uh, even though Missouri voted against succession, there were many people who sympathized, sympathized with the Confederates, right? Uh, that ended up splitting the state into two different governments with two different allegiances. With the James family side and with the Confederates, Frank James would join the Confederacy on the 4th of May in 1861. Mm. Right. So they became uh, west and or north and south. Uh, <clears throat> I think it was more like east and west. Missouri, north and south of Missouri. It was more like east and west, for sure. 
more people west is Confederate. More people east. Well, either way, Come on, Frank man. would fight in the Battle of Lexington, Kentucky, where 1774 Union soldiers died, Ooh. and the Confederates took control of the southwest Missouri. They did. So uh, when Frank so. returned home after the battle, he was arrested by a militia of Union supporters Damn. and released when they made him sign an oath to the Union. Oh, shit. Said, well, you better sign an oath to this Union. You ain't getting nowhere, boy. Well, he obviously lied about that to get released because in July 1862, he joined a group of raiders led by William Clark Quantrill. Hmm. Of course he's going to lie. Like, he's going to fucking not be like, oh, well, yeah, kill me. Which was known at that time as the Quantrill's Raiders. They were known to attack the Union Army and Union militia groups involved in the border war between Kansas and Missouri. Right. By 1863, the Raiders had many members, including Bloody Bill Anderson, the James Brothers, and the Younger Brothers. Uh, the James Younger Gang, yeah. Um, they then made their way to Lawrence, Kansas, where they would fuck shit up. Oh, Sorry, guys, that's what it says. That's what it here. says. <laughs> that's We're what it just says. reading the script, guys. <laughs> 21st of August, 1863, a group of about 300 raiders went to Lawrence. Pissed off that the town supported the Union, they wanted revenge. They're like, we're pissed off that you guys support the Union, and we're here for revenge. Well, anyway, they're pissed off that the town supported the Union. They want revenge on this town. So at 5 a.m., they started looting and burning the town, screaming, Black Lives Matter! <laughs> uh, and don't worry, it's mostly pre- peaceful. It's mostly peaceful. We come in peace. <laughs> <laughs> it's only going to get a little bit fiery. <laughs> we'll try to contain it. I don't know how, but a little bucket of water is only going to do nothing. <laughs> Anyway, there's about 3,000 people in this little town of Lawrence. Uh, bucket Brigade. They raised hell for four hours straight. Jeez. And then when, when they were done, they're like, it's four hours, we're done. They're like, we killed 180 men, and a town is burnt down, guys. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> they left the, uh, the saloon up, though, so they can go in there and get oh, fucked up. Um, this would become known as the, the Lawrence Massacre. Okay. So these guys are union supporters, and they just went in there and did that. <laughs> That's what happened. Wow. Yeah, that's some shit, man. 180 <laughs> men killed. That's 180 crazy. 80 men in a town burned down. See, the crazy thing is if if the South would have won, they wouldn't have been wanted for that. I mean, you know? <clears throat> no. They were doing uh, Confederate bidding, basically. So, uh, unf- man, unfortunately. They would have got, got reprimanded, though, for against uh, orders and oh, shit. I doubt Doubt it. Yeah, they would. Dude, South and North were burning down towns like fucking crazy well, back North and forth, dude. Burning down more towns than South. Of course they were. Uh, Frank James and Cole Younger were with the group, but there's no evidence that Jesse was there. But he was known to brag that he was. Oh, of course, why wouldn't you? Why, of course. Yeah, y'all remember the Lawrence Massacre? I was, I was there. there. Mm-hmm. Killed you, seven men. Right. Well, around November, a band of Union soldiers went to the Samuel farm looking for info on the location of the Raiders' camp. Right. They questioned Jesse, and when he didn't answer their questions, they whipped that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that boy didn't want to talk. Does he now? Whip him. Well, Dr. Samuel denied knowing where the camp was as well, and they repeatedly hanged him from a tree in the yard. After all the hanging, he ended up surviving, though. What? Jesse was pissed off, and soon after this, he joined the Bloody Bills group at the age of 18. 16. I mean, 16, yeah. The group led a raid on Centralia, Missouri on September 27, 1864 with more than 100 armed guerrillas who wanted to rob the train. Mm. While they waited for the train, they messed with the locos and robbed and burned down stores. Jeez. Mm, that was what killed a dude who tried defending a young woman they were harassing. Pissed off Don't apes. you dare stick up for a woman. Right. <laughs> when the train got there, there were 24 wounded and unarmed Union soldiers aboard. Oh, no. The group dragged them off the train and murdered them in front of the citizens. Every one of them. They robbed the train and set fire to the depot and the train and the train, and sent the train down the tracks with no crew or it would crash and be destroyed. Holy shit. So they went there to mess stuff up. We just said John Wesley Hardin was a beast. Well, this is a group of people. Uh, just still. They just killed 24 people. Right. More, oh, my goodness. Well, well, 25 if you count the guy that was sticking up for the chick. Mm. Wow. wonder how much uh, Jesse James actually killed, though. All right. He'll say all of them. <laughs> I killed all 25 of those motherfuckers. <laughs> The guerrillas were followed by a federal infantry led by A.V.E. Johnson. <laughs> Avenue Johnson. <laughs> right. Three miles south of Centralia, Missouri, the guerrillas bushwhacked the troops, oh, and over 120 of them were killed, Damn. with only three guerrillas being killed. Wow. Holy shit. So add another 120 to that list. 145. Wow. 
Both Jesse and Frank were a part of this battle, and it's said that Jesse is the one who killed Major Johnson, oh. as well as seven other men. Well, there's eight confirmed for Jesse. And Jesse's got eight. Because of James's, because of the James brothers' action, the family forced to leave Clay County. Mm. They're like, we got to go. We're a bunch of murderers. Right. We got to go south. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go beyond the Union line. Right. We got to get off Union soil. And they're like, all right, let's go. They went north instead. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, hey, I know we got to get out of Union soil, but uh, <laughs> let's, go to Nebraska. let's go to Nebraska. After Bloody Bill was killed in an ambush, the James oh. brothers split up. They're like, oh, shit, man. that didn't work out. I'm going to go this way, you go that way. Still heading north. <laughs> Frank went with Quantrill, so might as well, to Kentucky. Mm. So they went east. And uh, Jesse went to Texas. Nice. Good job, Jesse. With one of the Quantrill's lieutenant. Okay. Well, a total of 1,162 battles were fought in Missouri during the war. Although Jesse's family owned slaves, they were nice to them. Most times letting the children sleep in the house. <laughs> Most times. <laughs> Most times. Well, you know what? It's Sunday. I'm sure it's all right. <laughs> Yo, kids can sleep in the house. After the war, most of the slaves remained on the farm even after they had been freed. That tells you how good they treated them, right, then, huh? Right. I mean, fuck that. They're like, do you think I'm going uh, trucking yeah. through all this wilderness and <laughs> shit? I'm staying here. In spring 1865, Jesse rode into Lexington, Missouri, waving a white flag to surrender to the Union troops who were there. Wow. Instead, they shot him in the chest. Oh, shit. He went to Rulo, Nebraska to recover and then returned to Missouri. <sighs> <laughs> He's like, I give up. They're like, Pachoo! He's like, well, no, I don't. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> what the hell? Sons of bitches. Damn. I got to go all the way to Nebraska to recover, damn it. <laughs> shit. Well, living with his aunt in the late 19... Uh, living with his aunt in late 1865, Jesse <laughs> 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 fell in love with his cousin. Well, of course. Of all people. Zerelda Mims. That would be his first cousin, too. Looks like a dude. Well, Kind of looks like uh, um, Craig Ferguson. <laughs> no. A little I mean, bit. No. A young one. <laughs> I don't think so. Picture him smiling. You got to put Jeff next to him. Who? Jeff. Who's Jeff? The fucking uh, robot. Huh? Jeff, the robot. Robot. Clearly, you don't know who Craig Ferguson is if you don't know who Jeff oh, the robot Jeff. is. Jeff. G-E-O-F-F. Yeah. Yes. She was the daughter of his father's sister. Daughter of his father's sister. Which made them first cousins. Uh, I just said that. <laughs> he didn't care. I don't care. <laughs> Apparently don't not. care. And they're like, let's start dating. Oh, okay. Right. She's like, like oh, oh, okay. All right, what do we do? We're with each other every day anyway, probably. <laughs> like tending the fields and shit. Right. Jesse was a well-dressed man who read the Bible every day. He never swore one lick. He would make up his own swear words like fudge and dingus. That was his favorite. <laughs> Which Frank ended up nicknaming him. All right, dingus. Dingus. He Cla never swore, but he never had a problem fucking cabbing somebody in the forehead. Right. Though. Claiming to be forced into crime because of his family being persecuted during the war. Jesse and Frank became the leaders of a group of outlaws and gunslingers, which included <laughs> the younger brothers, Jim yeah. Reed, and a bunch of other ex-Confederates. Okay. 1866, the gang began their robbing. Okay, here With we Jesse go. Now, justifying now, this, with this, this is his hatred of this, the North. Everything that happened already was just stuff that happened during the war. Right. Now this is really when the uh, the ganging gets it going. They start gang banging all over the country. And Jesse says it's because it's a hatred for the North. All right, well, the first robbery was at a Republican militia owned by Clay County Saving Association Bank in Liberty, Missouri on February 13th, 1866. This was the first daylight robbery during peacetime. Whoa. Okay. Well, the gang took 60000 in cash and bonds, which is $976,000 today. When they were out making their escape, when they were making their escape, gunfire broke out, and an innocent 17-year-old boy named George Wymore was killed. Uh -huh. June 16, 1866, the gang freed two Quantrill gang members from the jail, killing the jailer. Mm -hmm. They had to, right? Over the next several years, the gang would rob eight more banks and a ticket office before robbing their first train. Ooh. Damn, it took Moving eight. Up. These guys actually lasted for eight years. No, several years, so maybe three. Several. Two or three. Yeah. Um, but still well, took them that long to two rob a train. A couple years. Several is three. Right, or more. No, a few is three or more, so then several is four or more. A few is three or more. So several has to be like five or more. 
four or more. Either or, May 23rd, 1867. <laughs> they robbed a bank in Richmond, Missouri, killing the mayor and two others. Damn, killing public officials now. Oh, shit. It was not until the 7th of December, D-Day. Oh, D-Day. Not D-Day. It's uh, Pearl Harbor. Fucking Day. Hiroshima it was. Hiroshima. Not Hiroshima. Um, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> For the... Uh, uh, the kamikaze years. The kamikazes. Uh, it was not until the 7th of December in 1869 that Jesse actually became famous. Okay, I'm going to make you famous, boy. He and Frank robbed... He and he Frank... And, he, he, and and Frank. Frank. <laughs> he and Frank. He and Frank. He and Frank robbed the Davies County Savings Association in Gallatin, Missouri, only getting a little money. That's stupid. Jesse ended up shooting the cashier, mistaking him for the man who killed Bloody Bill. He's like, you killed Bloody Bill. He's Who's like, Bloody he's Bill? Like, Who's Don't who? you lie to me? He's like, who? <laughs> right. <laughs> you think I'm stupid? Patoo. I swear to you, mister, I don't know that name. Uh, the story of their daring escape through the middle of a posse made newspapers for the very first time. His, oh, this marked the first time that Jesse James was labeled an outlaw. And a gunslinger. <laughs> Missouri Governor Thomas T. Crittenden. Set a three thousand dollars reward for his capture, dead or alive. <laughs> this was also the beginning of his alliance with John Newman Edwards, Newman, who was the editor and the founder of the Kansas City Times. Okay, so he's got a journalist on his side, huh? right? Of course, you're gonna. Edwards was a former Confederate cavalryman. Well, there you go. That explains it. Six months after the Gallatin robbery, Edwards published the first of many, many letters by Jesse, claiming his innocence. This is like here's Jesse's story today. It's uh this week in Jesse world. <laughs> this this week in uh I'm innocent by Jesse James. <laughs> right. When time locks and increased security made banks harder to rob, they turned to stagecoach and train robberies. Right. Naturally. Known officially as the James Younger Gang on July twenty first, eighteen seventy three. That's near- what you guys are waiting for, wasn't it? The J- James Younger Gang. Then now every, every, it's all clicking for everybody, right? Oh yeah. Cause that's what they're most famous as. Did we do a show just on the Youngers? I was just about to say, you guys can kind of consider this a uh, Jesse James slash James Younger Gang uh, episode. We didn't do on, one on just the Youngers? There's no reason to. Hmm. Cole Younger and all that? No, we didn't do that. Oh, that's right. That's all on this one. Yeah, pretty much. Love it. On July 21st, 1873, near Adair, Iowa, they robbed their first train by derailing a Rock Island line train, mm. killing its conductor. They made off with $3,000, which is equivalent to 64000 today, from the passengers and the express car. Well, they supposedly, wore, they supposedly wore KKK hoods while robbing the train. They only robbed passengers two more times, focusing on express cars instead. Right, might as well, right? A waste of time to go through the whole train trying to rob every single passenger and get the hell out of there. With pennies. Right. Well, Jesse married his cousin Zerelda on the 24th of April in 1874. And him and Frank try to settle it down for a little while. Mm. Try not to get in no trouble. Mm. Just take it easy. They're like, brother. All right. We're married. Married. With kids, probably, on the way. I think it's time to settle down now. Right. We got enough money to last us. Even though both brothers recently married and then both on their very honeymoons, they were still blamed for the almost every robbery that took place in the West. Since 1871, the Pinkertons had been trying to track the gang. Oh, the Pinkertons. But with support from many former Confederates, they couldn't track them down. They tried to have an agent Im- Im- infiltrate the Samuels farm, but he was soon found deceased. <laughs> Moited. Like they couldn't tell. All right. This boy ain't around here, and he ain't looking for fucking work. Right. 17th of March, though, in 1874, two other agents were sent after the Younger Brothers ended up being killed by the Youngers. But not before one of the agents shot and killed John Younger. So he got Johnny. Oh, got Johnny Younger. Johnny boy's out. Johnny's out, yeah. Yep. It's gone. Well, Alan Pinkerton, who was obviously the founder of the Pink- Pinkerton Agency, assigned himself to the case as a personal vendetta for agents the gang killed. Right. So you can't do that. You can't do that. Uh uh-uh. uh. He worked closely with a group of unionists who lived near the James family farm. Oh shit! In January 1875, he set up Agent Jack Ladd to pose a pose as a farmhand on Dan Askew's farm across the street. Well, the farm served as a hide as a hideout for the agent. January 26, he thought he spotted Jesse and Frank at the farm, which were actually the uh, two, two miles or away. miles and miles away. So the Pinkertons set up a raid later that night. Six reinforcements arrived and threw a smoke bomb in the house. Oh damn! Well, Jesse's half brother Archie thought it was a loose stick from the fire. 
tossed it back in the fireplace, and it exploded. Oh. Archie was killed, and Jesse's mom had her arm blown off. Oh, shit. Oh, my. Now, Jesse, you done. You, you, oh. you know what you boys just did? You, you done know. fucked up. Mm. Boy, Jesse and uh, Frank gonna have your asses. Right. Well, newspapers of the time reported that the device was a bomb, and the public was pissed. Oh, he's pinkered and he's coming into our he's home. Bombing uh, us. Bombing our, bombing with our no friends. no evidence. Right. Not only were the public pissed... <laughs> So was Jesse and, and his gang. gang. <laughs> I would be too. Yeah. On April 12th, 1875, uh, the neighbor Dan Askew was oh, found shit. with a bullet to his heel inside of his house. You know, damn well they went over there. And right. Like, Dan. Right. Really, Dan? Right. He's like, what do you mean, dude, bro? They, they threatened me. They threatened me. Uh, sorry. Right. Time to go, bud. Well, later that month, ag- later that month well, Agent Jack Ladd okay. was also found shot. And, and killed. After this, Jesse and his wife settled on a farm in Waverly, Missouri, and had their very first child, Jesse Edward. Jesse Edward. On the 31st of uh, October in 1875, was brought into this world. Or the 31st of August, but... Yeah, 31st of August, <laughs> August 1875. Aug- August-tober. Right. The couple, uh, the couple used fake names, and Jesse dyed his hair black and grew a beard and lay low for very... Very many months. <laughs> it was on this farm. That's what, that's what it says, guys. I just got to read it. <laughs> it definitely it was on this 100 farm. Do, 100% doesn't say that. <laughs> it was on this farm that the famous Northfield, Minnesota raid was planned. Everybody knows the famous Northfield raid, <laughs> right? If not, you're about to hear it. Right. Jesse, Frank, three younger brothers, Clell Miller, Charlie Pitts, and an outlaw from Minnesota named Bill Chadwell mm. all headed north. Right. Chadwell had told Jesse about how easy it was to rob in his home state, and Jesse loved the idea of robbing a northern bank. He's like, gotta stick it to these northerners right. even more. Well, they stopped at Mankato on the way, but Jesse was recognized, and they left. Damn. Well, split up in pairs, they headed northeast 50 miles to Northfield, eventually meeting on the outskirts of town on September 6th, 1876. They cased the bank and planned to rob it the next morning. Right. Well, fast forward to the next morning. Next morning is the 7th of September, right? It is. Well, September 7th, 1876, with three men entering the bank, two guarding the doors, and three remaining near a bridge across the square. The robbery was set to, the robbery was set to take place. Like, we're going to do this shit, we're going to do it early, right? We got to do it early in the morning. Even though back then, the people probably up and up. I, I bet that was like one of the most nobody, active, what do you mean? Nobody, active parts of the day was nope, early in the morning. Nobody slept. Right. People are still in the fucking saloon playing poker that they've been playing since 6 o'clock that last right. evening. Well, when the cashier, Joseph Lee Haywood, was ordered to open the safe, he falsely claimed that it had been time-locked. Oh, those pesky time-locks. Ask the, ask the Daltons. They know all about those uh, time-lock claims. So they pistol-whipped his ass right in the forehead and yep. split it open. Sure did. Had, held a bowie knife to his throat. He still refused. <clears throat> Another cashier, Alonzo Enos Bunker. Damn, that's a hell of a name. <laughs> yeah. Alonzo Enos Bunker Enos. tried to escape. Enos. Right. Tried to escape out the back door and was shot in the oh. shoulder. Well, at least he was only shot in the shoulder. Right. By this time, the townspeople were suspicious of the two men guarding the door. <laughs> hey! <laughs> What's those two men doing guarding the door of the bank? I'm very suspicious of you. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're like, mm. they got suspicious of two people guarding the door of a bank. And they started to make their way over to that very yeah, bank sure to ask these people, why, why are you standing, are you standing the outside door? the door of this bank? All five gang <laughs> did members. I mentioned we're right. at a bank. <laughs> right. <laughs> All five gang members outside fired shots in the air to clear the streets like, don't you come any closer. Patoo, 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 patoo. Pew, pew. I got people inside doing business. Right. The townspeople took cover and started to fire back at the outlaws. Oh, shit. They're like, what well, business, but two, but two, well, do you have? Right. Charlie Pitts and Bill Chadwell were killed by the oh, returning no. fire, and Cole, Jim, and Bob Younger were wounded but managed to escape. Right. But were captured a week later east of Mankato. Oh, you idiots. Well, as Jesse and Frank went to flee the bank, Jesse shot Haywood in the back of the head, killing him. Oh. In addition to Haywood, another man named Nicholas Gustafson, Gus, Gustafson, was also killed by the gang. Jesse and Frank escaped back to Missouri while their younger, while the younger brothers all got life in prison. Damn right they did. Well, with members dead or in prison, the James Younger gang is no more. It was officially over. Gone. Finito. Finished. We're like, we can't do this anymore, guys. <laughs> yeah, considering. What, what do you mean? Well, uh, three of our members are in prison. The rest are dead. Right. And uh, by the way, 
none of the ones still standing are named Younger. So <laughs> Right. Well, a few minutes later, Jesse and Frank showed up in Nashville, Tennessee, going by the names Thomas Howard and B.J. Woodson. Did you say a few minutes later? A few months. Uh, Frank settled down, but Jesse still wanted more. <laughs> He's like, I can't stop, Frankie. And Frank's like, Jesse, you got to calm down. He's like, I need that rush. He's like, Ugh, I can't do it. It's so boring. Frank slaps him. Like, Snap out of it. Snap out of it, you fucking idiot. You junkie. <laughs> you junkie. <laughs> you crime junkie. Go to the saloon and play some damn cards, right? Because I'm sure he's good at Try cards. not to kill nobody, would you? Money. All right. After recruiting new gang members, they continued <laughs> the robberies. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out well. <laughs> like, I'm just going to get more gang members, and we're going to continue the Frank's robbery. Like, Frank's like, there's absolutely no way we continue. And uh, Jesse's like, what if we just get new gang members? He's like, hmm, you're right. <laughs> you're, you're right. You're a genius. <laughs> Over the next couple of years, they held up a stagecoach in Mammoth Cave, Kentucky. Mm. They robbed a bank in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Okay. And they robbed a train in Winston, Missouri, mm. full of cigarettes. <laughs> in 1879, they robbed two stores in Western Missouri. Two stores? What kind of stores? They took $2,000 in cash in the second one. Ooh. No. Taking shelter in an abandoned plantation south of uh, St. Joseph, Louisiana, a law enforcement posse tracked them down and killed two of the outlaws, while the others, including Jesse... Has escaped. Man, these motherfucking law enforcement are good. Right. Tracking these motherfuckers down in the... Well, down sloppy. in the back. Sounds like they're you. really sloppy. They just didn't get where. Yeah. They're drive, and by this time, around. obviously, Jesse James' face is uh, plastered everywhere. Everywhere, and they didn't care. They just, they're on the move constantly, so they know we got, we're got we ahead of these motherfuckers, right? By 1881, the authorities in Tennessee growing suspicious. A lot of suspicion oh. going on. By 1881, with the authorities in Tennessee growing suspicious, Jesse and Frank returned to Missouri where they felt safer. Right. Jesse moved his family to St. Joseph, renting a house on 1318 Lafayette Street, there it is. which is still standing to this day. And uh, unfortunately uh, for Jesse James, it's going to suck for him. Uh, with $10,000 on his head, his wife begged him to give up crime. Jesse agreed, but only after one last. Right. <laughs> I just got to get that one last score, I just babe. Got to do it one more time. Well, he was hoping to get enough money to become a what? You a, guessed it, a farmer. a farmer. Everybody wanted to be a farmer. Everybody wanted to be a farmer. Everybody right. wants money. Everybody's got a price. Everybody's gonna pay. Money, 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 mm. money. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. Right. Well, Jesse was planning a robbery at a bank in Platt County, Missouri, with Bob and Charles Ford. Oh, shit. Yes, you guys just heard that uh, first name. Bob. Robert. Robert. Ford. Chuck. Robert and Chuck. Robert and Chucky. Robert and Charles Ford. Charles uh, Charles had been on rage with Jesse before, but Bob... He was new. He was a he was a new. <laughs> Bob was a new. Jesse asked the two brothers to move in with him while they planned the robbery. <laughs> Little did he know that Bob was secretly negotiating Ooh. Missouri Governor Thomas Crittenden. Oh, jeez. Oh. And the two were planning for Bob to bring down Jesse. Jesse. What an idiot. Should have been a loner, Jesse. Right. The governor already put up a $5,000 bounty on each gang member's head, as well as a $5, $5, a $5,000 Extra if there was a conviction. Okay. So you got ten grand. Right. You got ten grand. Well, Bob had killed a man and was promised a full pardon if he captured Jesse. And he also wanted to be the bounty money. He wanted to be the bounty money. He was like, You guys can pay whoever with me. I want <laughs> I will yes. be, I will be, I will be the transaction. I'll be the prize. Here you go. <laughs> but he also wanted the bounty honey money. You can exchange me for services. The bounty honey. He also wanted the bounty money. He sure did. Yes, On April 5th, did. 1882, after eating breakfast, they went over the plans for the robbery one more time before heading out. Well, Jesse noticed that a pitcher was crooked and stood on a chair to straighten it out. Just then, he heard the sound of a pistol being cocked before Bob Ford pulled the trigger and shot Jesse in the back of the head, right oh. below his right ear. Jesse toppled to the floor and died on the spot at Damn the right. age of 34. Over with. His children heard the gunshot and were the first to run over to him. Damn. His wife then ran into the room and tried to stop the bleeding. Bob Ford was long gone by now, and his brother Charles tried to tell Jesse's wife that the gun went off on accident. Oh, no. Before he, too, took off. Then we got a picture that we're looking at old Jesse James. Look at that dapper young man with his beard and everything. 
dead. That's like crazy back in the day that uh, when uh, somebody went for bounties, they would literally stamp, prop them up against yep. the wall yep. to take their picture. That's crazy. Because without a picture, you ain't getting paid. Nope. You got to have that fucking picture. Mm -hmm. Proof. When Jesse James' body was packed on ice and taken to his hometown where he was displayed for one hundredths of people. <laughs> one hundredths. <laughs> <laughs> where he was displayed for hundreds of people to come and view him. This motherfucker got a state capital right. uh, viewing. And he got a George Floyd funeral. He was buried. I don't the, think he got a gold casket, though. Right. He was buried on the family farm so the family could keep an eye on him and, and uh, keep an eye out for trespassers and souvenir hunters as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. His tombstone read, and I quote, in loving memory of my beloved son, murdered by a traitor and a coward whose name is not worthy to appear here. Mm -hmm. There's his grave in modern day, surrounded by uh, a bunch of uh, croquet wikis. <laughs> right. When Jesse's death became a national sensation, and the Fords made no attempt to hide their role in the killing. <laughs> Of Jesse. You think they would learn uh, to, not, to not do that? Right. The brothers surrendered to the authorities and were actually charged with murder and sentenced to hang. Of course they mm -hmm. were. But were given a full pardon by uh, they the governor. Be they better fucking been since they were doing the governor's bidding. Right. All in this very same day. It was very clear that the governor knew the intention was to kill Jesse and not to capture. The notion that a high-ranking official would conspire to kill a private citizen added to Jesse's notoriety. <laughs> Notoriety. <laughs> well, Bob only received a fraction of the payout. Uh oh. And when the brothers went back to their hometown of Richmond, they were not treated kind by the residents. Imagine not. Charles fled when he heard Frank was looking for a revenge, and after getting tuberculosis oh. and addicted to morphine, he committed oh, no. suicide on May 6, 1884. Oh, jeez. So basically, he already knew he was dead. Right. Well, Bob profited off the killing. Meanwhile, performing in a stage performing in a stage show called Outlaws of Missouri. Reenacting the shooting while noting that he was the one who shot Jesse in the back. Oh. He later went to Las Vegas, New Mexico. Hey, then to Creed, Colorado, and operated his own tent saloon. Okay. It was there that a man named Edward O'Kelly loaded a double barrel shotgun, entered the saloon, and said, Hello, Bob, before shooting him in the throat, killing him instantly with a oh, shotgun. Oh, no, in the throat? Jeez. Basically took his head off, I bet. Probably. O'Kelly was pardoned for the murder in 1902. Oh, shit. Pardoned. Damn. Meanwhile, 1882 is the year. Frank went to the governor's office and surrendered. Okay, I mean, by this time, right? Right. He took his gun off his belt, and Governor Crittenden... And said... All right. He took his gun off his belt... Gum. He took his gum out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Spit it on the ground. He took his gun off his belt and said, Governor Crittenden, I want to hand over to you that which no living man except myself has been permitted to touch. Since the year of 1861. Damn. Frank was tired of the outlaw life. He was done running. Do what you're going to do with me so I can move on with my life. All right. After much sympathy from the public. Or and, not. Right. <laughs> or end my life. <laughs> right. After much sympathy from the public and many long trials, Frank was acquitted on counts. Oh, shit. He returned home and found work as a horse trainer okay. and racetrack starter. All right. Look at this guy. Nice. With Jesse James's mother, Zerelda. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His mom's name was Zarelda as well. Right. Jesse James's mother, Zarelda, let tourists view Jesse's grave for 25 cents and offered tours of the family farm. Making money off of him, just like he would want. My baby right. boy would want this, I promise. Well, Jesse's wife, Zarelda, <laughs> died in the what? year. Right. Died in the year of 1900. Alone and very. Well, damn. Very she poor. She get none of that 25 cents? Alone and poor. They had it right. Alone and poor. <laughs> she probably did. She didn't get none of that 25 cents. How the hell she didn't get none? Jesse had thousands. Where'd the money go? Uh, well, yeah, right. They probably didn't like Zerelda. Right. Jesse's body was removed from the farm in 1902 and placed next to his wife. Okay. In Mount Olivet Cemetery. Mount well, Olivet. They... Olivet. Olivet. Olivet, probably. Um, at least they allowed that. Right. When well, Jesse's mother died of a heart attack on a train while traveling back home, from Frank's house on the 10th of February in 1911. Okay. She was buried next to Frank and her son, Archie. Wait, Frank. Frank. Yep, yeah, Frank died of natural causes at the age of 72. At so why, how, how, how are they going to say she was buried next to Frank? Right, when Frank was When buried. Frank wasn't even dead yet. Right, Frank Frank was buried next to her. Next to Archie. She was, Frank, she was buried next to Archie. Right. Who, uh, in turn, Frank was buried next to her and Archie. That's right. what I should say. 
Well, anyway, Frank died of natural causes at the age of 72 at the family farm on the 18th of February in 1915. Okay. Over 15 years, Jesse and his gangs committed over 26 holdups. Damn. Stealing more than $200,000 hairs in cash, which is about 4.7, you guessed it, million doll hairs. Mm. And killing 17 people, if not more. If not more. Probably on the upside of that. I would say 30. Of course, with any outlaw, there are rumors that Jesse survived the shooting, which you're going to hear, and you've already heard uh, multiple people claiming to be right. one of the famous gun doubts, laws, and gunslingers. Almost as soon as the newspaper announced his death, the rumors were there. Some say that Robert Ford killed another man in a plot to allow Jesse to escape. Mm. Jesse's body was exhumed in 1995, and DNA testing was done. The sample confirmed that his DNA was consistent with one of his relatives in the female line. In 1948, a man yeah, named... They don't mean anything, because, no, DNA's that far along, dude, anybody can be consistent. That's what they say, consistent. They don't mean nothing. There's some similarities. Right. Well, in 1948, a man named J. Frank Dalton claimed he was Jesse James. Dalton was supposedly 100 year, one years old at the time. It's believable. With the story, with story not holding up to questions from members of the James family, Dalton died on August... 15th, 1955, along with the mystery. Well, there are numerous museums and monuments to Jesse James all around Missouri and the country. Uh, yeah, the James's farm in Kearney, Missouri. Well, in 1974, Clay County, Missouri bought that property. The county operates the site as a house museum and historic site. It was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1972 with a boundary increase in 1978. Well, that's fantastic. Jesse James Home Museum, the house where Jesse James was killed in South St. Jo Joseph, was moved in 1939 to the Belt Highway on St. Joseph's east side to attract tourists. In 1977, it was moved to its current location near Pate House, Petty House, Petty House, um. which was the headquarters of the Pony Express. Okay. The house is owned and operated by the Pony Express Historical Association. All right. Just because you moved the house, I mean, he died there. He died in that spot on earth. The house just happened to be there. He like, died in the house. Yeah, but he's died in that spot on the earth. I'm willing to bet if there's such thing as ghosts and no. people that stick around, he's still in that house. I don't think he's in the house. I think he's in that spot. No. That very spot. So no. whatever is there, no. that's what he's on. It's well known that spirits can attach to things. Yeah, that so spot. So, of course, he would be attached to where yeah, he died in the house. Yeah, that no, that spot. No. The that's, very spot. That's dumb. The very spot. Yeah, very on the spot. floor. On the floor. In the house. Right. The Jesse James Bank <laughs> Museum on the Square in Liberty, Missouri, is the site of the first daylight bank robbery in the United States in peacetime. We yeah. said that earlier. Okay. The museum is managed by Clay County along with James Farm Home and the museum outside of Kearney. Okay, so that's cool. Well, the First National Bank of Northfield, the Northfield Historical Society in Northfield, Minnesota, has restored the building that housed the First National Bank, which... Uh, the aforementioned 1876 Six raid, raid took place. Fantastic. Heaton Bowman Funeral Home, 36th Street and Frederick Avenue, St. Joseph, Missouri. The funeral home's predecessor conducted the original autopsy and funeral for, you guessed, guessed it, it. <laughs> Jesse James. A room in the back holds the logbook and other documentation. That's fantastic. I mean, that's and, like a major fucking yeah. thing right there. And the Jesse James Tavern is located on Asdy County, Kerry, Ireland. Wow. Okay. It's been claimed that James's ancestors were from that area of Ireland. But but documented evidence suggests that on his father's side, Jesse was a third generation American of English descent. Hmm. Either or, they still right. got a um, Jesse James Tavern in County, Kerry, Ireland. That's fantastic. Ireland, so. And Asdy. That would be a hell of a tour to go... Uh, all those places. To all those places, dude. Go to Missouri and then Ireland. <laughs> well, and then Minnesota. Yeah. When you come back. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Why? Minnesota's where uh, Minnesota's not the cool. raid took place. Yeah, Minnesota's not cool. Nothing in Minnesota that's cool. Nothing in Missouri's cool. Yeah, it's more of an old west than Minnesota. You can see all kinds of old towns and cool shit. Many festivals celebrate Jesse James around the country each year as well. So we we gave you what is uh the main shit historical sites basically right the the factual evidence of Jesse James and now that we celebrate this is what we get and of course it's got to be the death scene right people like seeing people die 
the defeat of Jesse James days. In Northfield, Minnesota, is among the largest outdoor celebrations in the state. In Citation Minnesota. needed. <laughs> right. In Minnesota, outdoor celebrations. They like hockey and they like all that stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is held annually, annually in September during this weekend after Labor Day. Thousands of visitors... <laughs> Thousands of visitors watch reenactments of the robbery, a championship rodeo, and a carnival, performance of a 19th century style melodrama musical, and a parade during the five day event. Damn. Damn. It's five days? Damn. Nice little festival. Well, Jesse James's boyhood home in Kearney, Missouri, is operated as a museum dedicated to the town's most famous resident. Each year, a recreational fair, the Jesse James Festival, is held during the third weekend in September. Fantastic. With well, the annual. The annual Victorian Festival in Joyce County, Illinois, is held on Labor Day weekend at the 1866 Colonel William H. Fulkerson Estate, Hazeldale. Festivities include telling Jesse James history and stories and by reenactments of stagecoach holdups. So, like, look at all the That's easy to do, right? You're going to have, like, a half a train there. And you think oh, it's a stagecoach, so you wouldn't need a train at all? One well, is a half a stagecoach. Why? So you can see in it. We're doing reenactments. I get it. Right. Well, they probably jump out, hold, tell the people to get out. Right. That kind of stuff. If I was doing a reenactment, I'd do it like ruthless. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd be up like right. fucking hitting people with the fucking butt of the gun and. Right. right. It'd be like the Civil War reenactments when you're doing a battle. Yeah, but that's, they don't even make them as brutal as they actually were. Mm, they should. Well, over three day event, thousands of spectators learn. Of the documented James Gang stopover at the Hazel Dale, and of their connection with ex-Confederate Fulkerson. Okay. And this is what they knew about Fulkerson, huh? Well, in Russellville, Kentucky, the site of the robbery of the Southern Bank in 1868 holds a reenactment of the robbery every year as the Logan County Tobacco and Heritage Festival. Well, the small town of Oak Grove, Louisiana, also hosts a town-wide annual Jesse James Outlaw Roundup Festival. It's a Jesse James Outlaw Roundup Festival. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Usually in the early to mid-autumn. This is a reference to a short time Jesse James supposedly spent near this area. He was like, he, I'm pretty sure his horse huh. was seen. I'm pretty sure. Uh, outskirts of town one day. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We'll make a whole damn festival about it, though. Right. And that's it, guys. All about Jesse James there. You've seen pretty much uh, Jesse James and the James Younger Gang, too. I'm sure there was more about the Younger Gang because the Younger Gang did form uh, if that's the way, separate. If that's the way Jesse went on and that's the true story of his death, what an idiot. Why? He trusted this guy he never met just because it was the brother of the other guy. Well, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. The, bro- other, they, but, but the they, other guy fucking... The brother? But no the other one? guy clearly knew. Yeah, so that's even worse. It's a bad of a judge of character. Jesse. There's no way. Um, there's no way Bob Ford didn't say, "Hey, Chuck, <clears throat> I'm in big shit, man. You know, I murdered this dude, fucking, right. and now the governor wants me to basically murder Jesse." Well, probably didn't even say that. He's like, "He's like, man, Jesse's a good dude. We made a lot of money together. We can make money. Why don't you do this?" Like, like, yeah, I'm I gonna can't. go to prison for the rest of my life. He's gotta go. And he's like, "Fuck it." I know. <laughs> what a perfect time. Right. What a what a conscious uh, guy. Bob Ford was though to notice. Hey man, this guy's on a fucking stool fixing a picture. Now's no better time to kill him than now. Right, there'd be no other better time. Right. So yeah, that's how. Uh, Get done. You think if he wasn't killed like that, he'd still be as famous as he was? No, I think he would, because it clearly said he was already famous while he was uh, doing his outlaw activity. Yeah, but made him more famous when he got moided. The way he did, right. with the with the governor known to uh, order the hit, basically. Right. Yeah. It's a good story. Very good story of Jesse James. Jesse James. James. I don't think I've ever seen a movie of Jesse James, though. Nope. Besides Young Guns. No. Nope. That's it's not even Young Guns. It's Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid, man. So, <laughs> I miss Billy, Billy the Kid. <laughs> yep, that's going to do it for us for Sports. this episode of Outlaws and Gunslingers all about, you're an idiot, all about uh, Jesse James, boys about, and girls. How about Jesse? Because I'm a loner. A loner's going to be alone. Another story of the uh, one of the Jesse? most famous gunslingers in uh, history. Just to give you a little preview of what's coming up Jesse so far. James. Jesse James was one of my favorites, though. Never was. That's probably why I never watched a movie about him or anything. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Jesse James, you Jesse know, James. you know him, you know him, you know him. What are you going to do? So far, well, coming up, 
We still got Virginia City. Ooh, and then we got the real Jesse James, Billy the Kid, or the real Billy the Kid, which is Jesse James trying to be Billy the Kid. Was Billy the Kid after Jesse James? No, oh, we'll see. Black Bart. No, we already did bowls, didn't we? Bowls. Did we do Black Bart bowls? I don't fucking know. Black Bart bowls. Well, we still got uh, Virginia City, Billy the Kid, which is uh, two parts when we did it last time. It could be one or two, depending on uh, Then we get a sad one what with we Little do. Bighorn. Ooh. Yeah, we get the Little Bighorn, Battle of Little Bighorn, kind of straying away from the Wild West and into uh, um, Army Indian activity that was going on right. during the Wild West. Still got the Town of Deadwood. Still got a epic four-part Wyatt Earp. Gambling in the Wild West, Hatfields and McCoy. Oh, no. And um, Triple H. It's time to play Ooh. the game. Oh, that's, yeah, this is going to be a, uh, off the different, off the, but this is to show you, this is an outlaw, basically. And he's a. Oh, well, not an outlaw. The world, or probably the world, or at least America's first serial killer, H.H. H. Holmes, which was uh, right. doing his shit in Chicago at the same time all this other stuff is uh, right. going on in the Wild West. So, yeah, we got See, that. And, is, uh, yeah, we swerve it in. We give you everything. Might uh, do a episode on sports in the Wild West. And I think we still have Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid that we never even covered in the first place. So, might have that. Which, I think that's what we're going to start doing in each era. We're going to slip in a few of those serial what, what killers kind of- and... And what kind of sports were going on at the same time. And right, uh, I'm sure there's sports con- definitely in the mafia area. Sports yep. is uh, connected to the mafias. Oh, um, the Black Sox all day. That and um, the CCNY basketball oh, team that geez, well, like that they fixed. Day. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we got all that coming up before we get to Prohibition and Al Capone and Lucky Luciano. Uh, Lucky Luciano. Stories coming up. So, yeah, that's all coming up on Outlaws Lucky. and Gunslingers here on He's the Creative Lucky. Control Network. If you want to hear anything He's else. So Lucky Luciano. <laughs> if you want to hear. Lucky Luciano. Are you done? No. <laughs> if you want to hear anything else that we got going on, go to Mouthy Mission Gander's or podcast. Don't. Search us up. We, If you're a fan of wrestling, old school attitude era wrestling, we do the Monday Night Watch Along. We, we watch. The main events of Nitro and Raw every week, and we give our own uh, scores because that's what we like to do. We like to score everything. Everything is a competition, so we're going to see in our minds who won the war. Who really won the Monday Night War? And right now, uh, in the year of 1997, after two years of watching, WCW uh, is in a comfortable Lead. In June ish of nineteen ninety seven, right now WCW is uh more comfortable, more than comfortable yeah. lead. And WCW is about to lap the field if if it were the leader of the race. Speaking of Deadwood too, we are uh maybe starting a official dead not official <laughs> on the uh, Deadwood T V show Spart, but Ooh. Our official Deadwood review of the three seasons plus the movie that's going to come out. So go over to Mouth of Michiganders, movie wherever you get out. your podcast. Already. That's what I said. And about the movie that came out. That's clearly what I said. Yeah, Mouth of Michiganders podcast over there for now. We'll be back next week for. Oh, is it going to be like a, a, a review show or a, a rewind? Or Can you a... not take a hint of what I'm trying to end the episode? I don't know. <laughs> you just always try to interrupt me, man. I'm trying to end that damn episode. Bang, dang. We'll be back probably <laughs> next week. We might as well do Little Bighorn uh, next week. So uh, that's no, your next week. Do Little Bighorn. Oh, we're doing it. Okay. So we only got a couple left right. um, before we get to the big guys. So <laughs> I miss. We'll probably do Little Bighorn next week. That could be a two part series. And then we'll move into Billy the Kid probably yeah. after that. That's the, um, the ending song to this episode is going to be that. Not Quote the, me on that. Not of this episode. Yeah. I miss Why would it be that when, when we have Billy Kid episodes coming up, you moron? I'm singing it. This is nothing to do. I'm going to edit all your singing out because oh. nobody wants to hear that terrible shit. Oh. Join us next week for Battle of Little Big Horn, most likely. <laughs> Man, I'm going to punch this guy. We got to go. We're the Mouth of Michiganders with. With bang and dang. Jeez. Jeez.